Welcome to the Hermit Craft Recap. My name is Pixlerifs, our writer is Lee XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara, and we're broadcasting from the top of our own pillar, which seems to be made out of creative block. But luckily the Hermits are still being creative with blocks, and as week 9 begins, we see bases taking shape, sometimes even a different shape to the one they had before, and new challenges being invented to keep the server collectively on its toes. Oh, and Doc M destroying four entire regions of the world in a single episode, but more on that later. In the meantime, let's dive into all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Joe Hills, who is understandably repentant for last week's shulker napping once he realises the shulker may sire a generation of boxes for the entire server to use, and also that it took Doc M and Azuma a lot of effort to bring it back over the void of the end and smuggle it into the overworld. I don't want to let Doc blow up the thing that's most precious to me on this server, our relationships. So I'm going to be an adult. So he puts it back, even going so far as to heal the shulker before he moves it, and pushing it around invisibly so you don't disturb the poor little guy while he's down for his nap. Eventually the grumbling, levitation pellet flinging baby is put back in its glass case, along with appropriate signage in case history decides to repeat itself. Please don't open. You know what, I realize we're out of problems for today, how did that happen? ZF tries a different approach to interdimensional projectiles. The new custom challenge he came up with is to shoot an arrow through every available dimension and have it land on his own head. In the process, he discovers that any nether portal in general could be rigged as a machine gun, and shenanigans ensue. Vintage Beef and Pearlescent Moon both bear witness to crossworld acupuncture. Very deeply into the portal, okay? Just look at the swirls, look at the patterns. You noticing anything? Okay. I'm, I'm looking real deep. I feel like I'm staring into my soul a little bit. Ah! No! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to stand on it and try. Oh! Oh no, this is fine. This is fine. Get out of here! I am busy! <laughs> oh my gosh! Was that the trap? I wish it was. <laughs> The final experiment works out as well, and ZF successfully rids all three worlds of himself, and almost of his bow too. Watching back the footage, you can see me. You see me throw Bowie, boop, all the way over there. What a throw. It's incredible. When Vintage Beef isn't being turned into mincemeat by arrows, he's branching out his map art card game into the cards representing the actual hermits themselves. This range begins with B00, and Beef randomly generates both the card's overall health points and attack values by randomizing them with dispensers. Such a small little piece on the map, and such a massive project. Returning to the spawn town, he discovers both an invite to XB Crafted's Octodrop game and a hint from Azuma about where the final Easter egg was hidden. And if Beef hadn't had the sharp eyes to spot it, it might have been an Easter egg for the world download instead. You sneaky little bugger. Okay, okay, so how the heck am I going to get it out of there? Back on the topic of things confused about what dimension they're in, iJevin builds an end city but in the nether over a lava ocean. The materials were adapted to mimic their present surroundings and really to accommodate the piglins, who would be the whole point of the structure. The branching towers are meant to be his piglin bartering spot. Guys, let me know what you think about this build because it took an absolute forever time to build. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> it took forever to build. It's combining two things meant for one another that goes wrong for everyone involved when Jevin tries digging for netherite using a wither boss. The melee stage of the Wither actually creates a nice 3x3 tunnel, but that's still not much of a help when you need a full beacon pyramid, especially not at the price of all the equipment lost, but it's a fun experiment, plus it feels nice to dunk on the strongest entity in the game. Meanwhile, the second strongest entity in the game, Doc M77, is also out to dig with explosions, although as we're sure you're all aware at this point, the result is much more spectacular. Hi Doc! <laughs> <laughs> it seems to work. I feel like I should interview you at this point. How, how's it going, Doc? Still How pretty tense. Uh, Determined that no square blocks are allowed to fit into his square hole, Doc fires up the World Eater, a machine so big that he has to have extra camera accounts just to make sure it stays loaded, and starts shaving down the landscape layer by layer like a 3D printer in reverse. And we don't know about you, but we think seeing the top sheared off a woodland mansion is weirdly satisfying. The process is not without its hitches, but they are incredibly minor considering how much TNT he's dropping. He just has to clean up some obsidian left behind by previous caving expeditions, and he even has Joe Hills to help with that. Eventually, Doc hits bedrock and lets us know that this is where the real grind begins. 
All we're saying is this better not become the new meta for diamond mining, otherwise we're hanging up our pickaxes and going to live on a farm instead. But what we will have to do now is remove the last uh, bit of lava, dig out uh, some of these individual block rows that form, the flat floor here and then half slab it out. This will be, you know, <laughs> now the grind has just started. Impulse SV also had some teardown to do as we learned last week, and this week we see exactly why. Having had second thoughts about the vibe of his base entrance, Impulse carves out a large amount of rock face and redesigns the entrance to the Empire. The reconstructed version feels a lot more dwarven, and so do the people who come to visit. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice that before. Eh? Oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> don't know that this fits. Uh, I don't think no, they're no, supposed perfect. to grow over top of eyeballs. After getting some landscaping tips from Good Times with Scar and filling the river back in, he moves into the interior and digs out more than he really needs. But it looks like Cub Fan might not be the only one with back doors into everyone's bases. Like in the village, basically, this is where Gem is gonna do some work in here with this village. See. Gems villager. Yeah, we're a little too close, so I've kind of encroached a little bit too much. And while Impulse's businesses are doing very well, he's not blessed with the largest pile of diamonds in Spawn Town quite yet, although we think he's got everybody beat on emeralds. Impulse will also have to live with Gemini Tay potentially using his Elytra Tunnel as a garbage chute. Is it pneumatic post when it's just downwards, or does that count as an airdrop? Debate in the comments. The whole side by side with a friend also comes into play as Jem decides that the exact elven architecture she'll be going for is in fact the high elves. So lots of quartz will be had, just not right now, she's not run out of stripped oak just yet. I've been a little bit nervous about talking about exactly which type of elf I want to take inspiration from because, well, I don't want to put myself in a box. The building begins with another starter house to operate out of lest the dwarf uses her storage as his own. She in turn grabs some effects off of Impulse's beacons, though having bright orange lines shoot from the ground is not the best ambience. Maybe if Elf Gem is distant cousins with Elf Scar, she can get that cookie recipe and explain to Pearlescent Moon why these cookies are suspiciously like soup. Let's have a look at this one. It's a very expensive cookie. I'm blind. Why is this very reminiscent of my soup? Scar, did you steal my soup recipe and put it into a cookie? Scar, and I've got a ball. This cookie goes into a bowl. <laughs> Once the blindness wears off, Pearl realises that her diamond ore pillar can be made significantly more Australian, and we promise it's just the draw distance that's making it look like a rocky Q-tip. Pearl's after more valuable stuff like netherite, upgrading basically all her gear at once, and returning to the overworld she cracks on with the terraforming, rocking the landscape a few more times, and making sure there's room for a bridge between her landscape and impulses. And it is her landscape, as she staked a claim on the entire sort of island she's built on. Let's just hope that now she's signed up for Hermit Dares, nobody dares her to finish it by the next episode. Okay. But then again, the sign up started yesterday, so... Yes. Still fresh, still fresh, got some time. Still fresh. Hermit Dares is the brainchild of Iskal85, whose other brain offspring include this nightmarish diamond Slim Jim. <laughs> well, hello there. <laughs> There's even a face on the altar for the Hermit Dares sign up book, and not to be confused with Hermit Challenges, the idea is that anyone on the server can sign up to be bonked on the head with the Dare stick once they've opted in, and that Dares should be for a laugh instead of for profit or malice. In this good natured spirit, Iskel even gives Stress Monster her own head so she can sign up without losing all her levels, before returning to his cave base to confirm a slime sighting and dig out a centerpiece slime farm. And maybe I'll even build a little storage container for my slime fountain. Stress has dared herself to find a dryish river in the hopes of building an axolotl-powered squid farm, and she also pays a visit to Iskel's cave since it's the nearest place to get axolotls and the tropical fish to breed them. While she's hoping to breed a blue axolotl, in the meantime she can populate the tanks with some of the colourful critters and build herself an AFK house floating in the sky to make sure the squid will spawn in the farm. It works splendidly well, meaning Stress can drop off a boatload of black dye for the glass shop and the guardian farm, before returning to upgrade the squid farm into a luxury swimming pool. <laughs> Ooh, poggers! As the industrialization of the server starts tugging at the CPU load, Izumavoid takes some steps to ensure his side of the spawn town is as hopper-free as possible. He brings in a couple of innovative cart unloaders as well as a new stumpy receiver for his dark box mob farm, for monsters to take better fall damage against. Like we're gonna farm the pillagers from this pillager outpost, so I'll probably have something complementing to this for the farm design that I'm working for these pillagers and they're, they're coming after me again. The discovery of how scaffolding acts with mob spawning is also applied to the witch hut farm, but not built on the server yet, especially since the honeyblock sweeper turns out to be too sticky to use for the contraption. 
Still, the carbon footprint is heavily outweighed by all the kelp getting stuck on the glass for no reason. I have absolutely no idea why some of these items are stopping before the top. That's not how they're supposed to behave. And also by Hypno's super smelter, probably. The array of auto-fed furnaces is hidden away in a barn at Hypnotized's main base area from where it side-eyes the local fauna for fuel. Meanwhile, someone steals half of his personal diamond ore pillar from the spawn base. Investigation only finds a written book with a riddle hinting at a nearby location, which in turn leads to another riddle, and then to another riddle. And Hypno just gets his comments to try and figure out that one because personally he doesn't have time for all this Batman stuff. He does have time for Creeper Chicken and a dropper game devised by his own personal Riddler, XB Crafted, who decided he needed to drum up some interest in the Octo Dropper by gifting people their first attempt free of charge. At least it'll rake in some diamonds to add to his own personal diamond block tower, regardless of the wild goose chase he sends Hypno on to recover his. Ooh, actually, do we have more diamonds to add? Oh, baby. I don't know how ha how, how high <laughs> this is going to get us, but... With the exterior of his underground railroad carriage done, XB decides it needs a skylight, and digs a hole to the surface, aiming to emulate the natural style of Minecraft caves as he goes. It's a quick entrance if he doesn't want to use the nether hub, and hopefully if people drop by, it'll clue them into where exactly his base is. He's still finding easter eggs from people who thought he lived in another postcode. In other bird news, False Symmetry's eagle at spawn now has a cookie in its beak, and Google says chocolate chip is poisonous to birds, so that's attempted murder, I guess. All the while, False is off working on her mountain castle base. Though she specifically picked out this part of world generation, she admits the cliffs could be sharper, and so one ice farm later, False actively hones the peaks into a pointier version. It's about time snowier snow met icier ice. But uh, you once we've got trees around here and little buildings popping up, it'll look really cool. I just wanted to get the train sorted first. Grian takes a page out of her book and also crams a castle structure into the side of his massive rock. The Greek-style white temple at the cliff face will surely make for a nice view for Mumbo Jumbo and possibly him only because Mumbo settled a full 50 blocks or so away from it. When you when you said like when I said like base next to me or close to me, I didn't. It's real close. Yeah, we're, we're like super neighbors, dude. You built a bridge like straight to my lump. It was, it was fantastic. <laughs> we joke, of course, the two of them building nearby has historically proven to provide awesome content and will also save Mumbo on using the incredibly impractical nether portal to visit his friend. Seriously, Grian's base portal, though looking really cool as a floating midair assembly of rocks, is very in the air and unfriendly to anyone who dares use their legs to walk. Luckily, some full damage Grian was about to take is suddenly prevented by him appearing at the entrance into the underground dimensional rift he built a couple of weeks ago. Also, his outro is invaded by Scar's voice reading out some mysterious lines, but we'll leave it to the theorist community to figure it out. Frankly, we don't have time for this Batman stuff either. Each of those blades represent a past life. Memories, desires, dreams, and past loves. And finally, there's Mumbo, who despite all of these diamond towers going up everywhere and taking a month-long hiatus from the game, is still the richest hermit, allegedly. At least he's rich with redstone and ideas. Now he just needs the perfect place to plot them out. And having looked around for a lump to build on, he settles on the one opposite Grian's front door. There's already a bridge to it and everything. Yeah, we're, we're like super neighbors, dude. You built a bridge like straight to my lump. It was it was fantastic. <laughs> and that's the location as he plots the segment of his mega base out, which Mumbo chooses to build a storage vault for all his items, both the products of an attached industrial farming area and the fortune he'll amass in the process. So naturally, Grian wants in and he wants to make things interesting. Here's what I want to propose, right? Yep. Once your, your vault is actually built and ready, right? Yep, yep. I want the opportunity to break in. If yep. I die, I can't break in for another two weeks or whatever. Okay, that sounds like a really fair deal. That sounds fantastic. But yeah. if I break in, I get the goodies. Oh, but I mean, I hope you realize so you... That there'd be a lot of goodies in there. Like this is, I'm actually going to need help transporting the items from my previous vault over to this vault. That's how many there are. Like we're going to have to do something. I did, I did hear that there was more diamonds than the entire server combined. And and that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.